Hello, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things natural dyes and share natural dye tutorials with you. In today's video, we're going to time travel a little bit because I started filming this video before being pregnant and I'm finishing very pregnant. So you'll notice that most of the footage of this video was previously filmed. So today I'm going to be showing you how to use soy milk that can be used for a multitude of applications in your natural diet practice. Most of the information I'm sharing with you today I learned from John Marshall and I highly suggest his book Salvation Through Soy if you want to take a really deep dive into how soy can be incorporated into your natural diet practice. Soy has a multitude of applications for natural dye. It can be used as a dye binder, a pigment binder, an anti-wicking agent, and a pre and post sizing. So there's a lot of things that can be done with soy milk. However, in the natural dye world, it's commonly mislabeled as a mordant. Soy milk is not a mordant because there's no chemical bond taking place between the soy and the fiber, or the dye in the soy. So soy is a true binder, and you can think of it this way. The soy traps the pigment within it, and as it oxidizes, it binds it onto the fiber. So it really is a true binder, binding the pigment onto the fiber. I'm often asked how long a piece of soy milk treated fiber should sit be before being dyed. And in John's book, he states that soy is most receptive to color during the first two weeks after the soy is applied to the fiber. And then after that period of time, it actually begins to resist color. However, he was recently asked in an interview if a piece of fiber that was treated with soy milk three months before could be put into an immersion dye bath. And his response was that the two week period of time is better when painting on the fiber. However, it takes a longer period of time for the soy milk to oxidize and cure and become permanent on the fiber. So his advice was to let that piece of fiber cure for three more months to make it permanent and then it can be placed into the immersion bath. And when a piece of fiber has had the full time to cure with the soy milk, the color results that can be expected are like those of protein fibers because soy is a protein. And so of course this has led me to want to do my own experiments and I have tested fiber that sat for a couple of weeks, a couple of months, and even six months. And I did find that the piece of fiber that had sat for the longest period of time did get deeper, richer dye results. And something that I personally love about using soy is that it pulls the really earthy, muted tones from the natural dyes, whereas aluminum mordants will pull the really bright, cheerful tones. So when you're trying to decide whether you want to use soy or you want to use an aluminum mordant, it's one of those perfect times that you can ask yourself what your goal is for the project that you're working on. And if you are really looking for some more earthy, muted tones, then soy milk might be the right choice for you. And so for this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make soy milk that can be used for pre-treating fibers for an immersion bath. And I'll be back to show how soy milk can be used for other natural dye applications as well. The first step to pre-treating fiber with soy milk is to make the soy milk. You can also use store-bought soy milk. However, I found that I get the best results when I make my own soy milk. So the first step to making soy milk is to measure out some dry soybeans. For about one to two yards of fiber, I use one fourth of a cup of dried soybeans. So we're just going to measure those out and put them into a jar or a bowl or anything that has enough space to where you can put a full cup of water to two cups of water over them because they're gonna swell significantly as they soak up that water. one to two cups of water. The amount of water you add is not really important. We're going to be draining this water off after they soak. You just wanna make sure you're putting at least four times as much water in so they can soak that up and have as much as they need to soak and swell. Water, we're just going to let them soak for about 12 hours. I usually just let mine soak overnight and they're going to swell up significantly and I have some here that have been soaking for 12 hours so I'm now I'm going to strain them and rinse them well before I blend them with some water. So here you can see the soybeans that are freshly 
soaking, the ones we just covered with water. And here are the beans that have been soaking for 12 hours. Same amount of beans. So you can see how much they swell. mine on high for about a minute and I have a high speed blender but if you don't have a high speed blender that's also okay just blend them as best as you can we're going to be straining out the pulp so if you have some chunks in there that's perfectly okay I right, so the beans and water in the blender and I'm going to blend them on high for about one to two minutes milk as I'm going to get from this pulp. I'm going to throw it in the compost and then we're going to fill the bucket up with water. So now I have taken my soy milk and I have filled my bucket up with water to make it a watered down soy milk. Very watery and I gave it a really good stir to incorporate it together. Okay, so now the soy milk is ready for fiber. So I've wetted out my scoured fiber and I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in and give it a good stir and make sure there's no air bubbles.
So when your fiber has soaked in the soy milk for 10 to 18 hours and you're ready to take it out of the soy milk, you're going to want to take it out and get as much of the excess soy milk out of the fiber as possible. This is because you don't want the soy milk to drip down in the fiber while it's drying and create unevenness when it goes into the dye bath. So I like to use a washing machine and spin my fiber without the rinse option on. However, if you don't have an option like that on your washing machine, you can just wring it out as much as possible. I like to pop mine and get as much of the soy milk all as possible. So after it's dry, you're going to give it two to three more dips in the soy milk, but you're not going to have to let it soak each time. Just a quick dip, make sure it's wet and you move it around for about a minute and then you're going to take it out and do the same thing. You're going to want to remove the excess soy milk and let it dry and then dip it again. After its third dip, you can do it a fourth time, but after its third dip, you can let it dry. So after that last dip and dry, you're going to want to let it cure. And this is a really important step. So you're not going to want to take that fiber and immediately put it into a dye bath. You want to give it some time to cure. Thanks for watching. I hope that this tutorial was helpful to you. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below, or you can reach me over on Instagram. I hope that you all have a wonderful day. Thank you.